Kansas State defeats West Virginia in overtime, moves to 12-1, and one, and pretty sure we're going to see them ranked in the new AP Top 25. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slasher U. I'm your host, Christian Rao, here with my co-host, Steve Feck, and we're going to break down Kansas State defeating number 24, West Virginia, 82-76 in overtime. This was one of the most entertaining games of New Year's Eve. We had a lot of great sports on, on New Year's Eve, and this was just one of the Prime cuts, if you will. Steve, break us down on this one. Kansas State needed overtime to get past them, but they found a way to do so against West Virginia. Yeah, and then they were down 17-3 to in, in the beginning of the first half at one point. I mean, they came back. And in essence, WVU, if you said they were ranked 24, they not only gave the game away with turnovers, you know, they had 22 points off of 20 turnovers that they, you know, the K-State had converted – but they gave away their spot in the AP top 25 to Kansas State for all intents and purposes. Sure, I mean, West yeah. Virginia has played above everybody. Everybody had them near the bottom and saying, oh, they, they lost too much talent through the transfer portal. And, you know, you know, Huggins is depending too much on junior college you know, transfer people to come in. Well, that's what Bob Huggins does. He brings in guys from the junior college ranks that he really likes, people that, he'll, like he says, I want them to be able to get on a bus, eat a stale sandwich, get off the bus, play a big game, get back on the bus again, eat another bad sandwich, and then go back and practice hard. I mean, that's the kind of player he's looking for, and that's the kind of coach that he is. So for me, Kansas State showed me a lot in this game. I mean, they really, really did. Uh, I thought that from – Probably the with about five minutes, six minutes left in the first half on, it was all Kansas State. I mean, WVU hit a big three pointer with like 0.9 seconds left to send it to overtime. But really, uh, I mean, it's WVU was lucky it even went into overtime with that one. Uh, you know, Trey Mitchell played out of his mind. He was just out of his mind the entire game. And Jerome Tang. He's done a, a really great job here because, you know, and he even jokes about how basically he wasn't put the transfer portal. He doesn't know what, you know, how his team would fare, but he brought in like seven division one guys, a couple of junior college transfers, and he has used um, the two veterans. You know, he's used Noel and Masood to sort of be like that thread that, that holds everything together. And this team, they bought into this system, and Kansas State's not going to be a pushover. I mean, I, I mean, I have to admit, I thought it was going to be a rebuild, and it might be even a two-season rebuild. But based on what I'm seeing, you know, in the early going, and I've seen Kansas State play a couple of times, I, I think they're for real. They're not going to win the Big Twelve, but they're going to cause a lot of headaches for a lot of coaches, you know, throughout the season. Yeah, the Big 12 is really tough this year. And I feel like yeah. I always love saying that because we know what happened with the college football season with the Big 12. Uh, but it's it's moving over to the college basketball side of things as well. With the exception of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, really, this conference is really, really good. And those two teams aren't bad. It's just I feel like they're just a little bit below everyone else right now. West Virginia, obviously, they're going to probably jump out of the top 25, but they are a team that's going to be on the fringe, I think, all season long. Mm -hmm. You have teams like Texas and Kansas right now who rank to the top 10. Baylor's a fringe top 10 team. And then you have TCU, who has been in the top 25, I think, for the entire month of December. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see Kansas State hop in the top 25. All of those teams are top-notch teams in the college basketball picture right now. And we're just talking Big 12. The only team I really didn't talk about was Iowa State, who have had big wins and has been ranked at one point this season. They're kind of a fringe team as well. And Texas Tech, who is not a bad team either. So this Big 12 conference is really impressive this year. I think we are in for it when the Big 12 tournament starts. I think we are going to see some teams left out that we are going to be shocked that don't make it into the tournament right. and, and they're going to find themselves in the NIT and they're probably going to do really well, but because there's just not enough spots, but I, I mean, we're going to probably see five or six bids from the big 12 and that's pretty impressive, you know, cause that's a, not a huge conference. They are a very, very tough, very tough conference this year. As for Kansas state, we haven't seen them lose a game since the end of November against Butler. That's the only game they've lost so far. You know, when speaking of as, as tough as the big 12, they are in big 12 play. They play Texas, number six in the country, on Tuesday. 
and that's going to be a very good game. You're going to see that 9 o'clock Eastern time, Longhorn Network. So if you have that one, I think you should tune in. But there's no rest for the wicked for Kansas State. As soon as they're done with Texas, they take on number 12, Baylor. You know, And then they got TCU two games later. So they're, the next four games, three of those games are ranked opponents because they're right in the thick of it in the Big 12. So if Kansas State can really run with these teams, which we, we do think they can, uh, I don't know how I feel about them against Kansas yet, but maybe I think they have an opportunity against Texas. I think they can play Baylor well. Baylor shown, has shown some peaks and valleys. And TCU, as I think, honestly, I think TCU is a little underrated in my mind. So I'd be interested to see yeah. that game. Um, however, all of these games are going to be very, very good. And I'm looking forward to seeing how Kansas State fares against the Longhorns, Steve. Yeah, you know, and I, I, can, I can see them beating the Longhorns. It's not that Texas is a bad team. I mean, they've struggled a little bit, you know, here over the last couple of weeks, but I mean, they're a really talented team, but, but Kansas state is just pesky. And, and it's, it's the kind of, yep. it's like, you know, when, when you're, you're having a really nice day at the beach or you're, you're at a pool party late at night and it's a great company and you're talking, but then there's, there's mosquitoes around and gnats flying around your face, and you just you can't help but swatting it. That's what Kansas State is going to be. WVU too, but I think Kansas State's going to be that kind of team. And if Marquise Noel plays like he did uh, the other night on New Year's Eve, uh, Kansas State's going to get themselves and keep themselves in the top 25 because I mean he he, he is that motor. He dives for loose balls. You know he had 23 points, 10 assists. I think he had seven or eight steals. He was just in the middle of everything. And if he's playing at that level and stays healthy all season long, um, nobody's going to want to play Kansas State, not even Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good luck for that one. As for West Virginia, they take on Oklahoma State um, uh, tonight on Monday. We're going to see that 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then Saturday, we'll see them take on Kansas. Speaking of that, number four in the country, that should be a good game. Big 12 play is always fun. We're going to be here at Slash U. Be sure to tune in as we will have you covered with all the recaps of all the big games here covering college basketball and other college sports every single day this year in 2023. Let us know your thoughts in the comment description below. Hit like and subscribe while you're there. And thanks for watching. Slash for you.